Hello there, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to be getting ready together and I just have a bunch of new products. Um, most of them I've tried at least once, but I haven't really tried them enough to form an opinion. So we're gonna just kinda of see what we think as we go along. The palette that I'm using today is one of the cutest little palettes I think I've ever seen. This is from Milani, it's the Gilded Getaway. I did a look with this palette yesterday, so that was my first time using it and I'll pop up on the screen a picture. I used kind of the greens and the bronzy colors, so it ended up being kind of cool and deep. And I thought today, I wanna use this palette again and I wanna go for something bright and cheery and colorful. So if you wanna come along for this fun play with makeup time, then just keep on watching. All right, so let's get some eyeshadow primer on. This is a newer primer to me. This is the Rare Beauty always an optimist eyeshadow primer and I am really enjoying this. I am interested to see what happens in the real hot summer once the heat kicks in here if this still holds everything in place but so far so good and I really love how cooling it feels on the lids and I really love how it does a great job of neutralizing the veins on my eyelids. All right, while that sets, I really need something on my lips. So I'm gonna show you this new Laneige. This is called a Lip Treatment Balm. This is the outer packaging. And it says that it has coconut oil in it to help deeply nourish. It has peptides and adenosine, I don't know. It says that that boosts the look of fullness firms and smooths visibly visible lip wrinkles. And then it also has pearl to reflect light for an illuminated pout. So here is through the packaging, you can kind of see the pearlescent kind of glow to the product. But what I think is so genius is the packaging. Not only is it just super cute, but look at this. Okay, so this is a hidden lip applicator. So when you open it up, you don't have to stick your fingers in the product. So this is actually something you could take with you in your purse and apply on the go, not have to worry about having a clean finger. So this smells delicious. Grapefruit. Smells like grapefruit, which grapefruit is a very kind of uplifting scent. So energizing. <laughs> and there you go. So it doesn't take a whole lot, but it really instantly just feels good on the lips. So now I've only used this probably a handful of times, so still testing it out to see as far as long-term benefits, but we'll see how the lips look at the end of our makeup time today. All right, so since I used this palette yesterday, I know that the shadows are a little bit on the powdery side. So I'm gonna do my eyes first before foundation. But take a look at these colors. All of the names have to do with something about camping or getting away. So I'm gonna start off with this matte cream shade. I love that they included that in this palette. It's called Chillax, and I'm gonna use my Sigma E50 to put this under the brow. And it is fairly brightening. All right, now we're just gonna go for it. We are gonna go into, um, I think I wanna use like some of these tones today. So I'm gonna mix a little bit of this and uh, just a touch in here. Tap off my brush, I learned this yesterday. <laughs> and then I'm gonna take this into the crease. So by combining it with that brow bone highlight shade, gonna mute it out so it's not quite so intense right off the bat. So that's a really pretty combination. Just those two combined. And I think I'll do one more layer of that. And by the way, I'm using the BQ Beauty 201 brush for this step. Just building that up and this is blending out very nicely. Let's go down to a smaller brush and now we're just gonna go straight in with this bright orange and that is called Campfire, very appropriately named. I'm gonna use the BK Beauty 206 brush now and let's just see what happens. Oh, very nice. Okay, so it's not scary. Um, it's pigmented, but it's not so pigmented that, you know, you put your brush on your eyes and you're 
going, oh no, I have too much blending out to do. I think I am gonna bring that a little bit further through the crease here and onto the lid. All right, and then in the outermost corner, uh, let's start off with more fun to see if this is dark enough. I'm gonna use a firm shader, the E57 from Sigma. And let's just pack this on here, right in the outermost part. That's a pretty brown. Um, might need to go a little deeper, we'll see. Just gonna work that towards the lash line there. A little bit into that orange. So yeah, I would say, I mean, it's pigmented, but um, it is taking some work to kind of build up the pigment there. And then let's use this shade right here, which is Oasis on a Morphe 5, M506 to kind of marry those two shades together. Let's just see. That kind of helps everything blend. Okay, let's do something fun. <laughs> let's go on the lid. I'm gonna start off with this shade right here, which is called Kindle. Now, when I swatched these metallics, I mean, that was one swipe. Look how intense that is. So let's just see. Oh yeah, it's applying that way to the lid too. That's really, really orange. So we'll have a little bit of fun. We'll kind of layer some things on top of it. And then let's go in with this shade right here. It's called Vacay Goals. Again, very, very pigmented. I'm just gonna tap that kind of over part of that. Whoa, is that bright. <laughs> It's a bright kind of orangey, orangey gold there. It's gonna look like we've got a fire on our on our eyes today, huh? All right, and let's just go in, let's go right next to it with this gold. Let's just see what happens. We're just gonna have a little fun today. Whoa, Nelly. Yep, that is really, really, really yellow. A very yellowy orange, but hey, it's kind of fun. Okay, I know this looks a little crazy, but hang with me here. All right, I'm gonna take the BK Beauty 206. Just brush that through the crease a little bit. Um, I think I'm gonna go back with just a little more of the first shade, um, Kindle, and just tap a little bit more here, and then a little more of Vacay Goals as well. Okay, now on the lower lash line, I'm going to use one of the new Milani Gilded Shadow Sticks and these don't have the color names on them. So I'll put it on the screen. I can never remember what is what. So I've only used this I think once before, but it's a real pretty kind of bronzy. It has a little bit of a shimmer through it or kind of a pearly shimmer. No. No big chunks of glitter or anything, but real pretty. Okay, let's just have some fun. I'm gonna go in with the shade right here, which is a almost like a matte, deep, deep green, hunter green kind of color, but I'm gonna use the Morphe M432 and just tap that right into the roots of the lower lashes. And let's just see what that does. Oh yeah, I like that. Bring in just a hint of some green down here. So if you've ever wanted to experiment with color, this is the year to do it because apparently one of the big trends for spring and summer this year is very colorful eyes. So I do have a video coming about spring and summer trends for this year for makeup and how to wear them as a mature woman. So stay tuned for that. All right, so I think we're going to now Go to some liquid black liner. This is one way that you can just kind of, kind of neutralize things a little bit. So I'm gonna use the Maybelline Hyper Easy Brush Tip Liner. And going to stay pretty close to the lashes here on the inner corner. 
and I don't think I'm gonna wing it out too much. We'll just see what happens though, right? Okay, we are gonna go and finish up the eyes after we do our foundation and everything. So I'm going to now just clean up under the eyes with a little almond oil and I just transfer it into this beautiful Too Faced Plump and Prime bottle. So I just couldn't bear to throw it away. It's so pretty. All right, before I apply foundation, I figured this out yesterday when I was testing this out. It, I think it's gonna work better under foundation. So this is the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Hello Halo Liquid Highlighter, and I have the shade Gilded Glow. So yesterday when I tested this out on top of makeup, it did okay here on my cheeks, but on the bridge of my nose, it actually removed the foundation. And I'm like, we don't want that. So let's try this under makeup today. I've not actually done this. So, I mean, my skin's pretty glowy already just from my moisturizer and my um, sunscreen. And, you know, I have normally kind of combination skin anyway, but those two products that I use do seem to make my skin look a little extra glowy. So let's just put a little bit here kind of on the high points of the face. Now, when I bought this, I had seen a review that was kind of comparing it to the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. I personally don't feel that it is uh, comparable. That one I can put under, over, and I don't feel like that one is quite as metallic. This one has just a little bit of a metallic sheen and you can see does kind of bring out a little bit more texture. All right, for foundation, I was really tempted to use this one on camera for you all. This is the Good Apple Foundation from KVD, but I'm working on a separate dedicated review. So look for a first impression, lasting impression on this. So today though, I am still gonna use one that's relatively new. It's the Sephora Best Skin Ever Foundation. I picked up this shade first and then went back and got a lighter shade so that I can work and mix them as my sunless tanner fades and all that. So I have 21.5 Y and 12 Y. So I'm gonna mix those two together. So one thing I have learned about this foundation is it does oxidize just a little bit on me, not throughout the day, but pretty much like within a minute or so of application, you'll see it kind of deepen just a little bit. So I've learned I need to go lighter than I think I do initially, and then it will kind of go to my right shade. So that's just something to note. Um, and I'm gonna use my Stands Out sponge to blend that in. Don't mind the dirty side, <laughs> use the clean side. Forgot to wash this last night. And this is one that works um, after your initial like four uses or so, you use it dry and it's just, it's so unique. So I need to pick up another one so that when mine is dirty like this, I have an alternate one, but that's all right. And now I'm gonna add just a little bit here in the center of the face. That's pretty well blended. All right, let's go to concealer. All right, this is another area I know a lot of you struggle too. I'm one that I really struggle getting a concealer that covers well, that doesn't crease or dry or whatever throughout the day. So still working on that and working on a video about that. But I'm trying four different new concealers right now. So this is really new to me. This is the Thrive Cosmetics Buildable Blur and Creaseless Concealer. So what it says on the box is that it says, instantly erase the look of dark cir circles, conceal blemishes, and perfect your complexion with our hybrid creaseless concealer that's infused with our proprietary eye serum. This effortlessly buildable skincare first formula visibly smooths fine lines and restores moisture. All right, let's just apply it. I'm gonna apply it, um, ooh, let's apply it without color corrector. All right, so you can really just kind of see how it is all on its own. 
I'm just experimenting kind of with different amounts, different ways to blend it in, and still trying to figure out what I think on it. So it is, um, it feels very thin, like a serum. Um, so for the thinness of it, I do feel like it provides pretty good coverage, but I would not say it's full coverage. Um, the only thing is I just can't decide. I always feel like I need to set it, but when I set it, I get creasing. So, uh, what are we to do, right? So, I will continue to keep you posted on this concealer and the others. But you can see, like, initially, it looks really nice and natural, kind of like a medium coverage, and it feels hydrating. You know, it looks like it's gonna stay. Maybe if I never smiled and I didn't move my cheeks, right? That's the problem. I smile and the lines appear. So anyway, we're gonna leave it for a while and let's finish up the rest of the face. So I think I'm going now to all powder products. So let's go ahead and powder the face. Now I'm not gonna use this powder today because I used it again yesterday and I just, do not like it. It's the Essence My Skin Perfector Loose Fixing Powder Instant Blur Effect Natural Matte Finish. No. Um, it, it looks good for about five minutes. It looks almost more on the dry blurring side. And then with by the time I'm done with the rest of my makeup, my skin, it looks like I haven't set it at all. It's visible on the skin. I didn't like that at all. I've tried it with several foundations. So I'm going back to one of my tried and true, which is the Becca Hydra Mist Powder. I don't know what I'm going to do when this is discontinued, but for now, I'm just going to enjoy my favorite powder. <laughs> I'm using the ColourPop Puff to put that on my skin, really pat it in. And this, by the way, is the best way to really set your makeup if you have kind of more combination oily skin. And that powder with the combination of the puff, you can see it just really instantly blurs all the imperfections. It's great. Okay, now that we've taken out all the color on our face, let's add a little bit back in strategically. I'm using this new Stila, what is this called? Twin Cheeks. It is a bronze matte and kitten shimmer. So it says um, it's a kitten and bronzer duo. So here again is one of those kind of products that they call a bronzer, but really it's more of a contour shade. So it's a very nice cool matte shade. So I have really been enjoying this. And then this is named after the famous kitten eyeshadow. It has a really beautiful pearl glow. It doesn't have any visible shimmer in it, but I've really been enjoying this. I'm gonna use the Sigma F05 brush and we're gonna use this to contour today. So just putting this under the cheeks and if you missed my contour blush bronzer bronzer video, <laughs> I'll link that up above. But if you watched it, then you will know by looking at this color why I say it's a contour and not a bronzer. All right, now that we've kind of shaped the face and given our face some structure, let's add a little color to the cheek. So I'm going to start off first with this new blush. I think this has been out for a few months, but this is the Persona Super Blush in the shade Terracotta. And I've only used this two times. So um, it's more of, to me, on my skin tone, more of a kind of bronzer shade. It does have quite a lot of yellow. So if you're super kind of pinky fair, I don't know that you would love this, but she has two other blushes that are really great. I own both of those as well. So, but I just kind of wanted to give this one a try today for you all. So you can see it definitely looks a lot more like a bronzer on my skin tone. It's really pretty though. And it does have a subtle little bit of a sheen. 
but it's not overly shimmery or anything. All right, let's add a little more color to the cheeks. So in my Sephora haul, I showed the bronzer from Bare Minerals in Kiss a Pink. I went back before the sale was over and got Kiss of Rose as well. Oh my goodness, it's so pretty. I think I'm going to, let's try a combination of both of them. So I'm gonna dip my brush. This is the E4 from Morphe, by the way. And let's just add a little bit of those to kind of the higher part of the cheek. Let's go in with the other side of that duo, which is Kitten, I'm using a MAC 140 fan brush. And you can see it's just a really nice glow. <laughs> Our cheeks are really glowy now. I actually don't notice too much of that Wet n Wild Mega Glow coming through because I'm looking here on the Cupid's bow. And once I applied foundation and powder, I really don't feel like there's much here, but I am noticing on the bridge of my nose, the foundation didn't stick real well there. So I think that highlighter might be good just for about the tops of the cheeks, but um, the bridge of the nose, even under foundation, I kind of feel like it messed with it <laughs> just a little bit. So, all right, now that we're really nice and glowy, let's just add a little more glow. All right, so this is the Tarte Glow Powder, and this is Shape Tape Glow Powder. So, this is kind of a mystery to me. It reminds me a bit of the Milani Prep Set and Glow, but I feel like this one has maybe just a hint more glow to it. And it says that it is for a soft focus finish dust all over face to set makeup. Then for a subtle glow, apply to high points of the cheeks. Use with Shape Tape Concealer and Shape Tape Glow Wand for maximum light reflecting lifted perfection. So if I use just a little bit of this on the bridge of my nose, it's not overly brightening at all. So it's not adding any kind of white, you know, to the face. But let's take this BK Beauty 102 brush, which is real light and fluffy. Let's just take a little bit of this and brush it kind of on the face for kind of that all over subtle glow that they say we can achieve. <laughs> we'll see. I'm really gonna look like I'm glowing from space when I'm done here, huh? So I would say if you're a drier skin um, person, you might really enjoy this to set your makeup. It did add a really nice, just soft glow. So it's not shimmery, which is really good. But yeah, still I've used it a few times. I don't know that I've ever used it all over my face like that. So let's see what happens. All right, let's take a look at our concealer. So you can see, I do have creasing already. Um, I didn't powder or set it, but, um, and I feel like once it's sunk in, I need more coverage. Can you tell? I've got some of the gray peeking through. So I'm just gonna add a tiny little bit more here and right here. And then before that has a chance to really move, I'm going to set it with the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder. I have shade two, and I'm using this little mini Real Techniques contour brush. I need just a little bit of concealer down the bridge of my nose. Okay. Now I told you we were going to go back to the eyes and do one final step. I just love to use this on just about every eye look. It is the Hourglass Scattered Light in Reflect. And it is a slightly peachy toned champagne color. But let's just put this now over the top of our eye shadow. And we're gonna watch it transform that really orangey gold into just a really pretty, it's still still gold, but it just tones it down just enough and adds that little extra shimmer and shine I think that was missing. Oh, now see, 
This is what I love. And then the final touch for the inner corner, I'm just going to use the Milani. I use this a lot for the inner corner highlight. This is the strobe light in 901 Afterglow. This is just a sample size, by the way. Um, and I'm just going to put that right on the inner corner. And this is also the step I think that really helps bring a whole look together. All right, now before I do brows and mascara and lips, I'm going to go ahead and apply some setting spray. So this is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. All right, now I'm going to do my brows, but I'm just gonna skip over this since I recently did a brow video. I'm using the same Milani Precision Brow Pencil in 120 Caramel, but this time I'm gonna use my Thrive Cosmetics Instant Brow Fix in the shade Audrey. And then I will come back and we'll do mascara. All right, now normally I fast forward or skip through my mascara application, but today I have something fun that we're going to use today. So I'm just laughing because I opened this yesterday and I was like, oh my goodness, I don't know. This is the Morphe The Big Prime Mascara. So I'm only laughing because if you haven't seen this, yes. I saved the box so I can read you what it says. It says it's infused with ingredients known to condition. The unique blue shade preps your lashes for larger than life volume and amplifies the effect and color intensity of your mascara. So the thought behind the color is that blue with a black mascara on top of it is going to intensify the black. Well, let's see what you think. Um, so again, I said I did use this yesterday. First, I gotta curl my lashes, hold on. Okay, <laughs> let's apply this. All right, so I like the wand. It's a skinny kind of natural bristle wand, not a rubber one. So I do like that. And you can see there's quite a bit of color there. I mean, I suppose this could be a look. You wouldn't have to top it with mascara. Not really the look I'm going for today. I actually have a meeting this afternoon. So don't think I need to go in with bright blue mascara. Now I gave that a few extra seconds to set and become a little more tacky. I don't want it completely dry, but I'm letting it sit just a little longer than I did yesterday. So now I'm gonna go in with my IT Cosmetics Superhero Mascara. I have a couple of other new mascaras, but I don't like to use a new primer and a new mascara together because then I don't know which one I don't like or which one is great. So. Let's use my normal tried and true favorite mascara. But let's just see if that blue makes the black any more intense than it normally is. Um, I don't know. I mean, it is pretty black, but I don't know that I would say it's much different than normal, but. All right, so there's basically two coats. Um, I don't feel like the color is that much different or that the effect is that much different than my normal, but um, I think the thing will be over time, whether I feel like it does condition the lashes as well as my favorite, which is the Origins or not. So, um, but now for the lower lashes, I'm gonna go in with my usual, the Thrive Cosmetics Liquid Lash Extensions. All right, I'll have a little more mascara cleanup to do, but we're gonna let it dry. So now let's just take a look at the lips. I haven't wiped anything off. Um, they feel moisturized. Most of that balm has sunk into the lips, so that's, I guess, a good sign. Um, but it does mean my lips were probably pretty parched. Um, so after removing that, I do think that the lips look slightly smoother. I still have, you know, visible lip lines, so it didn't take them all away, but hey, you know, we'll go with what we've got. Now I'll just apply a little bit of the Max Soft Ochre Paint Pot around the edge of the lips. All right, so now let's finish up the lips. I'm gonna apply the Smashbox Be Legendary Lip Liner in medium brown. 
And now instead of going bright, I'm going to use a more neutral color. So it allows me to use one of my new lipsticks. This is the Smashbox Be Legendary Lipstick. So in the same line as their new lip liners, they came out with lipsticks. And I do like the white packaging. I think it makes it stand out from my collection. But this is the color. These have a very soft, subtle vanilla scent. And this color is, what is it called? Level Up. And it's, you know, I'm sure so different than any other neutral nude pink that I have in my collection. But let me show you. So yesterday I wore this just by itself and at first I thought it was going to be really drying because it is more of a matte finish but then once it kind of settled on my lips I really didn't find it to be drying. I don't think it's super hydrating either but because it's a matte formula it does last for quite a long time. Um, so you could leave it like this, but I'm going to add just a little gloss. So this is the Wayne Goss Gloss in Hibiscus always a mouthful for me to say. <laughs> so let's just add a little bit right here in the center. All right, and here at long last is our finished look. So it was really fun to play with those kind of fiery colors on the eyes and in the end, just toning them down a little bit, I think makes this look pretty wearable. I mean, I'm gonna go out and about in this look today. And then by keeping the lips more neutral and the cheeks more neutral, I think it just kind of helps the overall look not look too crazy. As far as the products that I use today, I will continue to keep you updated. I have a Sephora haul update video coming, so I'll kind of be sharing my full thoughts on several of these items. As far as this little palette goes, so after using it two days in a row, I can say on the one hand, this is one of the cutest palettes that I own. Um, but you know, the formulation and the color story, I don't know that this is going to be a palette that I am going to be reaching for real often. I think if you have somebody in your life who loves camping and makeup, I think this would be a cute little gift idea for them. Yesterday, I felt like my shadows at the end of the day looked kind of a little muddied and had kind of faded quite a bit. Um, I'll see how today's goes, but you know, overall, they're good shadows. I wouldn't say they're great. And I've used other Milani eyeshadows um, that I like, I think, a little bit better. But it's really cute. So, you know, again, would make a fun gift. And then, of course, the lip combination, the cheek combination, all those glowy things. <laughs> I will continue to keep you posted on all of those products as well. But I hope that you enjoyed getting ready with me today. Thank you as always so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.